Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for watching. This is part one of my supercharger rebuild on my Lotus Evora S. If you haven't already, please subscribe, hit that like button, and make sure to hit the notification bell to see the videos that follow. Today's the day, guys. Um, we're mowing the lawn next door. Oh, wait. Okay, that's better. I don't know if you guys can hear me. It's a super windy day today. Um, Supercharger has finally come back. Um, he took his time on it, but he also 3D printed, or 3D uh, scanned the blower to design a pancake style intercooler for it. So I may be getting that for free to test it out. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Um, but that'll be way long ahead. They still got to design and do all that stuff, but we are going to reinstall the supercharger. Okay. I apologize if it's windy or if the lawn mowing's too loud. If I have to, I'll just cut just to the, to the screen and then I'll just do a voiceover if I have to. But, um, I'm gonna turn you around and kind of show you, I guess, refresh my memory on what's going on. I always remember to videotape stuff. Um, the first time I didn't think about YouTubing it. Um, but I did videotape some reference points before I took it all apart. So right now it's in pieces and we're going to be putting the blower back into the car, reinstalling it. Um, so if you are taking yours off, do it in the reverse steps. I will send you the links um, to the Lotus manuals and stuff like that that um, are hard to find. But I will send those links um, in the description below. Um, also, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, um, and leave a comment. I know there's not a whole lot of content out there uh, concerning the Lotus Evora um, it, and definitely not any of it being taken apart or worked on or maintenance or anything like that so um, if you're curious you have an Evora and there's something that you'd like to know or hear or see um, let us know in the comments but here you go okay so the blower is back all I did is a rebuild he said that some of the bearings were kind of dried out um, these are prone to getting really hot obviously um, but I figured since it's a part, um, I went in ahead and got a new snout um, from Monkey Wrench Racing. I'll put that link as well, and as well as a new pulley. So we went from a 70 millimeter to a 66 millimeter. Um, and they claim horsepower numbers of around 60 horsepower, 45 to 60. Um, but I'm going to get it professionally tuned, and we will actually know the exact amount that we're getting from it. So, um, yeah, if I could do it again. I would probably get it ported. I, I, at the time, didn't think it was something I wanted to spend the money on. Um, looking back, that's probably something I should have done, uh, just knowing that these are prone to being so hot. Um, it might not add anything beneficiary as far as horsepower, but it will improve the efficiency of the blower um, and create less heat through air friction. Um, but shoulda, coulda, woulda, it's here now. We're gonna install it. And if I wind up putting that pancake intercooler on it, I might have him, um, or someone local, I might have them actually port it. So we'll see. But here is the install that we're going back on.
Okay, this is a difficult one because there is barely any clearance from the underneath of that. So I don't know if you kind of noticed, but I had to angle the injector rail to kind of get that in there. So now we're gonna play, get the injectors in there. Also, this is so much easier doing it off of the vehicle. I can actually manipulate a lot of what I'm doing here. So this is actually awesome. <laughs> For this part of the video, I just wanted to fast forward and talk over because um, you guys can kind of see that it took me a while um, struggling to find the right way to put this in. I wish there was a surefire one, two, three step guide to tell you guys, um, but once you get hands on, it's just going to take a little bit of finagling. Um, it probably would have been easier just to have the supercharger off of the intake to be able to install that. Um, seeing you, it'll give you a little bit more clearance. Um, but uh, I did not take it off or reinstall the supercharger onto the intake. I actually sent it out to be rebuilt with the intake still on it. Um, but you can see I took off the fuel rails, um, put in the fuel injectors. You know, you're just going to have to figure it out and kind of finagle it yourself to figure out what the best way is to do it. Um, I tried a couple different ways of doing that, as you can see. So the issue is, is I lost... Um, one of these bolts for here, it went in the engine bay. You can actually see the difference in these lengths here. So this is probably a 55 length. So it's, uh, they're both M8, grade eight, um, galvanized 1.25 thread. Um, and I'm gonna say this is 55 and this is probably 50 because this looks closer to the bolt that I bought. Um, so I did lose one of these like I said, you guys know how that goes. It is just gone. I've put my <laughs> my magnet pin in there with the light. I've, I mean, I've done everything besides pick the car up and shake it around. I wish I could do that, but. So what I did is, is I went in. Um, they didn't have anything with a flange bolt. Um, so I just bought a normal hex head bolt. Um, and then I also got some washers. So we are going to do it that way. Unfortunately, I'm... Uh, it, I'm going to put it on the back side of the blower too so nobody will see it. Uh, I'm just going to have to keep checking on it make sure it's still there and still holding and still doing what it's supposed to do. So, But that is that. There you go. It worked. You can barely tell. Uh, it's any different, but it is going to be a different hex head size on the top, not the bottom, but good. Okay, we might have a dilemma. <clears throat> so I took the fuel rails out while the supercharger was still in the car. And I was racking my brain why I did it that way, but it's because I couldn't get a wrench in to get that bolt off. So... If I can't do that, I'm gonna have to bring it out again and try to mount this first, the intake, and then put on the fuel rails like I did taking it out. So we will see. Well, there's not a whole lot going on here besides just putting the intake uh, and supercharger and fuel rails all together uh, back on the engine. Um, I explained a little bit earlier, I put rags in there uh, to keep dust debris critters out of the engine cylinders um, and that seemed to have worked while the time being why it sat still um, you can see I have a little piece of board there to be able to kind of get that supercharger in there it's not overly heavy it just makes it a little easier to be able to get the supercharger in there and to be able to get my body into the back of that trunk area on that note I'm five eight five nine um, pretty average if you're a tall guy you're probably not going to be able to sit like I'm sitting in there. If you're smaller than me, then it's going to be no problem. Um, but that trunk will hold your weight. Um, there's no issue with that. But right now I'm kind of uh, assessing the damage to come um, and seeing how hard that really is going to be to install a lot of that stuff. My biggest worries 
with two center nuts, which I'll kind of explain later in the video. And I'm actually going to point them out here soon. Hmm. Uh, okay. So I don't even know. I, let me get a flash. Oh, we got a flashlight right here. So let me explain to you the reasoning I am talking about this because it is. I would say near impossible, but I've talked to Lotus mechanics and they say it can be done. Okay. There is a bolt right there where I'm pointing. I don't know if you can see it when I back out, but it's right where that flashlight is. Just to the left. Let me get a better adjustment of right to the left. You can see it right there just to the left of that injector, but up right up against the intake. That thing is a booger, and I don't know how I'm gonna get anything down there to torque it. That's why I took off the fuel rail, so I could do a direct shot like that. So, I don't know. I honestly don't know. There's very little room between the cylinder head and that intake bolt. So we're gonna have to figure that out. But all these other ones are easy to get to. Right there, right there. There's another one around the corner over here, right there. Can you see it? There it is right there. And you got one down there. And then one underneath this, underneath the fuel rail regulator. Um, so I'm gonna have to get online and look for some tools that'll Hopefully fit in that area. I don't know what to do. Okay, another day. Um, I spent the rest of the day yesterday going out and trying to find some specific tools to be able to put that 12 millimeter bolt on the intake stud. Um, those two specifically that I pointed out are gonna be tough. Okay, we got the computer. We're gonna look at our, our, our torque specs. Um, these with bolts are T40, okay? And they go down to 25 newton meters, which we'll find out what that is in feet pound torque. Um, and then your 12 millimeter nuts will go on the studs, which the two middle ones are gonna be our hardest ones. Um, they go down to 20 newton meters. But we're gonna try different couple, a couple different things here, see if anything works. Uh, last resort, we're gonna to have to take that supercharger off and then put the fuel rails and fuel injectors back on while it's installed in the vehicle. That was the way I took it out because I did not have the correct tools apparently. So we're gonna try everything. We got some, uh, some flex sockets here. Uh, we got crow's feet or crow's foot. We're gonna try those. Um, I also have a flexible ratchet as well. And I have flexible hand ratchets as well. So one of those I really hope works. Uh, if it doesn't, like I said, we're gonna have to take the supercharger out again and uh, take the fuel barrels off and fuel injectors and then reinstall the supercharger to the intake and then install the injector rails. So. But the directions say to install the injector rails or the fuel rails and the injectors while it's out of the vehicle. So it's apparently possible with the right tools. So that's what we're gonna do.